Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for joining us. My name is Michelle Velasquez, and I am the bilingual advocacy coordinator with the Farm Worker and Landscape Pro Pro Advocacy Project. We are excited to share with you today information around housing resources for individuals living in Illinois, including the rental assistance programs currently available. Before we get started, we would like to express our gratitude to Commissioner Almanaya, who is joining us today, and to Anali Rocio, Marina and Olivia from the Resurrection Project who helped us make this event happen. Um, during today's live, you'll be getting to know a bit more about the work FLAP and TRP does under the Illinois Access to Justice Program. Additionally, we'll go over rights every person in Illinois has, regardless of their immigration status when it comes to housing and the re rental assistance programs currently available in for Illinois and Chicago residents. Um, I'll now hand it over to Anali from TRP to give us some background on that. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you for hosting this live with TRP. So I just want to give a brief overview about Illinois Access to Justice and the Eviction Prevention Program. So Illinois Access to Justice is a statewide program funded through the state of Illinois that was created to help mitigate the devastating consequences of detention and family separation due to mass incarceration and deportation. We have about 60 plus partners across the state that help provide um, legal protection uh, and through community-based programs and community navigator programs. Also launched in April 2021, the Illinois Eviction Prevention Program was established to keep families stably housed, ensure tenants and landlords are financially secure, and prevent a tide of evictions due to COVID-19. We hope that some of the information that we share with you today will allow you to better exercise your rights when it comes to housing. And please be sure to like and share this video so that we can make sure that as many people as possible receive this information and can apply for rental assistance funds. And with that, I'll pass it back to Michelle. Thank you. Um, and before we get into the Know Your Rights segment and all that we have um, in store for you, I wanted to uh, say a bit about FLAP. Um, uh, FLAP is an organization that mission is to improve the working conditions and opportunities for low-income workers and their households in industries such as cannery, farms, greenhouses, landscaping, meat, nursery, packing houses, restaurants, and snow plowing, and that's to name a few. Um, I'll be going more in depth and about um, FLAP services later during the live, but I wanted to give more of a background. Um, we will be joined by Commissioner Amanaya a little bit in a little bit. Um, uh, but right now, we can go ahead and start with the Know Your Rights presentation. So I think she's actually might be um, on already. Give me one second. Oh, great. Commissioner, are you on the stream? Yes, I'm here. OK, we just wanted to double check. OK, I'll pass it back to Michelle, and then I'll hand it back off to you. OK, thank you. Um, well, now I have the honor of introducing Commissioner Aymanaya. Aymanaya is the Cook County Commissioner of the Seventh District, serving the southwest side of Chicago. Uh, she became the youngest woman and the first Latina in over 25 years to serve on the Cook County Board of Commissioners when she took office in 2018. Uh, furthermore, she's one of the few formerly undocumented immigrants to hold the office in the country. Um, Commissioner Anaya has achieved major legislative accomplishments and has become a fierce advocate for immigrants, domestic violence, and sexual assault survivors, um, people with disabilities, and for working class families in Cook County. Um, she's worked diligently for affordable housing, gender equality, and health equity throughout her tenure as commissioner. Um, thank you, Commissioner, for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me. I, I do want to start off by, of course, relaying um, my gratitude uh, to the Farmer, um, a Farm Workers and a Landscaper Advocacy Project, or FLAP, and TRP, the Resurrection Project, for hosting this Facebook Live and also for inviting me. We know that during this very critical time, it's important that everybody really understands what their rights are, um, especially uh, just due to so much devastation um, that uh, the pandemic has caused our community. So again, my name is Alma Naya. I'm the Cook County Commissioner of the 7th District. I uh, serve uh, the southwest side of Chicago, 
Uh, I am the only Latina on the Cook County Board, but I have the most Latino district in the whole county and also the biggest concentration of immigrants. So uh, again, knowing your rights uh, is extremely, knowing your rights at workshops is extremely important to me. Um, I uh, do serve uh, the, the district and some of the zip codes that were uh, mostly impacted by COVID. So after a year of surviving, you know, COVID-19, uh, uh, many of the families, particularly families that are low income or other immigrant and other uh, vulnerable communities, now have to really readjust to navigating the negative impact of the pandemic as the world is starting to reopen and we're starting to see a little bit more of normalcy. So families um, have not uh, unfortunately lost loved ones uh, due to COVID, but ha are also just struggling to overcome the additional economic instability due to job losses or any uh, medical bills that have been accrued during the past year and a half. So we know that uh, human um, rights, uh, you know, really depend on, on, on a lot of things. And one of them is housing, right? We know that housing is uh, without a doubt, one of the most important things that we can help secure families. So we know it's the foundation um, to ensuring that we're uh, establishing a healthy uh, life uh, for the families of our uh, communities. And everyone should have access to safe and healthy living uh, environments, uh, no matter what the economic status is. And, and I know this firsthand because, um, you know, after the, the 2008 bubble, um, you know, our family lost our home. Um, I was uh, one of those uh, children and one of those families that were impacted by the economic uh, instability that was caused by uh, the recession of 2008. Um, so we know that at this time, our families are extremely vulnerable and we need to do everything in our power to ensure that. And that's what we're doing in Cook County. Um, so without any proper uh, resources and assistance, uh, recovery for the working families is just extremely difficult. And it is extremely uh, critical at this point that we continue to share information about the available resources to the families. So I know my office has done a lot of work around canvassing various communities in the district to inform about rental assistance programs. We've also uh, helped constituents file applications online. And in particular, we have assisted individuals um, that are not familiar with, with the process and how to use uh, you know, the computer or, or need any other technical assistance. Uh, but most importantly, we've done a lot of work um, and we've been, the office has been part of the working group to ensure that there are resources at the county level for maybe foreclosure um, uh, mediation and, 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 and uh, any type of program. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the work that we've done and some of the rights that you now have in Cook County um, as, as a, you know, a, a resident. So the first one um, that I want to talk about is the Cook County uh, Residential Tenant Landlord Ordinance, which was uh, passed in January, uh, officially passed in January of, of this year, and it came into effect June uh, 1st of this year. So I was a, a proud co-sponsor of this ordinance. Um, this establishes basic landlord tenant rights uh, and responsibilities for over 245 thousand renters uh, and households in suburban Cook County. The city of Chicago has a very similar ordinance and has uh, almost identical the, the, the protections that I'm about to highlight. Um, number one uh, is the lockout. So um, this ordinance prohibits any landlords from locking out tenants without any prop, uh, proper evictions. This is extremely important, um, especially because a lot of our, our uh, individuals and community members were not able to pay. So we don't want you know, landlords to just start kicking people out. That's a, a extremely, um, you know, against the law. So we want to make sure that that's that. So the other thing is uh, in regards to uh, late fees. So it prevents landlords from change, uh, sorry, charging late fees greater than $10 a month um, for the first $1,000 of rent. Um, security deposits. So uh, security deposit deposits may not be more uh, or higher than 1.5 times the monthly rent. Um, the other protection is the lease renewal. So the landlords must no notify the tenants in writing of his or her intent to not renew the existing rental agreement uh, at least six, uh, 60 days uh, prior to the termination. And this is, again, extremely important because it prevents any type of 
um, instability in, in people just getting, um, you know, that their lease being terminated without cause. And the final um, important thing that we need to highlight is the landlord repairs. So landlord needs to meet the timelines to address repairs for their properties uh, and will be subject to the lease terminations or, or uh, lease terminations or loss in um, in any of that uh, if they do miss those deadlines. So we need to continue to, to provide the, this type of protection. So in addition, I talked a little bit about um, the, the the evictions and foreclosure and other type of mediation um, that has been worked out. My office, along with uh, two of my colleagues, Commissioner uh, Scott Britton and Commissioner Larry Sufferden, were part of the working group to ensure that there was funding and that there was an actual plan to prevent evictions and to prevent foreclosures. So I, I do want to offer uh, that uh, as as resources. So. We need to uh, know that the Cook County has free legal help for residents. Um, you know, again, this uh, particularly covers evictions, foreclosures, and any unresolved debt issues that may exist um, that are maybe long lasting or have a negative impact um, on the future of that individual. So the the, the program and the, and the hotline for that, I, I will uh, mention uh, the phone number is uh, 855-956. Uh, 5763. Again, that number is 855-956-5763. Um, Cook County um, continues to uh, look at what are the additional type of mediation, um, not only through legal, but also direct services and assistance that will be uh, provided to the residents of Cook County. Uh, we are now, um, uh, you know, through ARF, uh, ARFA, uh, the American Rescue Plan, um, through the federal government, are going to be receiving about one billion dollars, which will be used uh, to ensure that there is um, any additional help, uh, any legal assistance. Um, we want to make sure, and we want to guarantee that housing continues to be a human right and that we do everything possible to ensure that people are not uh, you know, wrongfully evicted or are, are not suffering from any uh, housing insecurity. So again, I think uh, you know, the team here um, from FLAP and TRP for, for continuing to bring forward uh, this very important information to our constituents. And if there's anything um, that is needed, any type of assistance or help, um, I am more than happy to help any of the constituents. Uh, people can contact our office at 773-376-2700. Our office is open uh, from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Um, and we, we accept walk-ins. Uh, walk uh, and that address for our district office is uh, 4374 South Archer. Again, thank you, ladies, uh, for having me here today. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Um, that was all extremely helpful information. Um, even we wanted to thank you again for joining us today. I think it really matters to hear from elected officials and to know that you share also personally some experiences that your own constituents are facing, um, especially during this pandemic. Um, so we thank you for um, the advocacy that you do, um, that your office does and um, all your support. Um, so thank you again for your presence today. Uh, we look forward to working with you and your team as, as we move forward. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank Have a good one. You too. Um, now we're we'll be moving forward to the Know Your Rights section of our event today. And to start that off, um, I'll uh, talk a bit more about FLAP and our services. Uh, you already mentioned a little bit about FLAP's mission um, to improve the working conditions and opportunities for low-income workers and their families. The organization carries out its mission through advocacy, community outreach, community legal education, and that looks like, uh, and what that looks like is um, uh, specifically outreach, conducting outreach, um, throughout the state of Illinois and presenting Know Your Rights um, in the field to workers, um, referring workers and families to other uh, legal resources, and also partnering up with organizations such as um, TRP and programs like uh, Access to Justice. Um, during this pandemic, FAB has been able to facilitate access to cash transfers to low-income workers and their families. Um, we, of course, do our work and, say, and serve our community members regardless of their immigration status. Next. 
Uh, like I mentioned in the uh, last slide, FLAP first and foremost educates workers about their rights in uh, workplaces. Uh, we build relationship with um, churches, consulates, and other organizations to carry out these presentations. Um, our, like I said, also our staff travels to different parts of the state in order to make sure workers um, are able to get this information. Next. Um, FLEP is partnered with over 150 organizations and a network of attorneys that handle cases to defend folks if that they aren't being uh, paid a minimum wage for overtime or if they are forced to pay for uh, their uniforms or equipment for their jobs and resources for workers' compensation and accidents that occur in the workplace. Next. And then in this slide, you'll find all the ways to contact us. Uh, you can go to our website or call the number you see on the screen. Um, and of course, you can like and follow us on Facebook to see um, any updates or to ask us questions as well. Um, and now that we heard a bit about FLAP, we can go on to our KYR segment. Um, and just as a reminder, uh, please comment on the post with any questions and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Uh, we're going to go over rights that every person in Illinois has, regardless of uh, your immigration status. Um, and then first, uh, as a tenant, you have the right to not be discriminated against, which includes that you have the right to also not be discriminated against your immigration status. Um, you have the right to live in a habitable home, meaning a safe place with functioning water, heat that's free of pests, um, and the right to privacy, meaning your landlord can't enter your home without any notice. Um, you also have the right to document the communication you have between uh, you and your landlord. And something important to know is that these documents don't need to be notarized, but there should be uh, some proof that the landlord did receive notifications. Next. Um, here are the two different acts that protect a tenant against discrimination. Um, the first one is the Illinois Human Rights Act, which prohibits discrimination in Illinois um, related to employment, uh, financial credits, housing, and sexual harassment, um, just to name a few. And under the Illinois Tenant Protection Act, landlords can't use your immigration status to intimidate te tenants um, or threaten to call ICE or increase your rent or shut up utilities. Next. Um, and these are the essential services and non-essential repairs that a habitable home uh, must have, including heat, water, electricity, um, and if these services need emergency repair, uh, in, it must happen as soon as possible. Um, for non-urgent repairs, the landlord does have a specific time, uh, specific amount of time to make those repairs. Next. Um, if you are at risk of an eviction, you have the right to receive written notice, uh, fix the violation if the tenant is not in compliance with, with the lease, uh, get legal help and be represented by an attorney at court proceedings. And you have the right to remain in the unit until an ev eviction ruling by a court. Um, which is important to note that um, only can be exec executed by a sheriff. And again, it's important to note that any documents that you gather do not need to be notarized. Um, and we recommend fixing a violation in, in a lot of time. If not, then the landlord uh, can start the eviction process. Next. Uh, Governor Pritzker's eviction moratorium uh, prevents evictions from being filed if, ten, um, if the tenant owes rent. Uh, it states that the Illinois tenant declaration for COVID-19 must be complete, completed to stop evictions. Uh, to add, we recommend using the state moratorium since it's um, stronger than the federal one. Um, and an update to this is that the moratorium is in effect until July 24, and it will be extended, uh, but tenants will have to submit a COVID declaration to be qualified under this extension, um, and they can still submit if they haven't, um, and can still submit if they haven't already. Um, and then one last thing is that um, this does not uh, forgive debt. Next. 
Um, a, a declaration is the first step to uh, prevent eviction. Um, it helps you state that you have um, an income below um, $99,000, uh, COVID-related financial loss, uh, that you've attempted uh, to pay or uh, make partial payment, um, it, or if you're at risk of experiencing homelessness. Um, if you meet um, all of this, uh, you don't you don't have to complete a declaration. Um, sorry, if you meet all of the criteria but do not complete a declaration, an eviction can proceed. And a reminder is that this declaration does not require you uh, to have had COVID. Um, yeah, next. Uh, you can create a declaration by using the state of Illinois um, online creation um, of state declaration. And you can see the link is posted right there. Um, it is also available in Spanish. You can submit the declaration to your landlord uh, via email or text. Next. Um, this is a look into what questions will pop up on the website to help folks with filling out the declaration form. And again, it is also in Spanish. Next. And this is a look into the eviction process and the declaration that we went over can help stop the eviction process. Um, something to add would be that uh, declaration stops um, from starting an eviction. And if the eviction process has already started, a declaration will pause the eviction case until um, the moratorium ends. Next. Um, and then these are things notices uh, should include, um, a date of notice, address, unit number, date when the lease ends, amount owed. Um, there are notices that, e that are either five days or there are also 30 day notices for those without a lease. Um, a lease violation notice comes um, as a 10 day notice. And something to note is that timeframes can change depending on the city and county that you live in, in Illinois. Next, um, organizations that can help with mediation between you and your, between your landlord or police, um, if it gets to that point, are the Chicago Tenants um, Movement. Um, their number is on the screen and the Metropolitan Tenants Organization, MTO, um, and their number is also on the screen. Um, and uh, if you uh, need any of this information later on, you can feel free to um, contact us and, and we'll um, be happy to give that. Next. And here are the major takeaways from what we went over. Uh, and the last component will be uh, eviction legal support. And I can hand it over to Anali to uh, go over that with you. So thank you, Michelle, for reminding us of our housing rights and how to exercise them. Um, I will now be going over eviction legal support that's available for all residents of Illinois and who might uh, find themselves in need of this assistance or legal help. So we talked a little bit about housing rights and what a habitable, a habitable home consists of or what a lockout entails. So what do you do if you're a tenant or know someone who is being discriminated against for their immigration status or is being illegally locked out or evicted? So um, for, the, for the programs that we'll be discussing, the folks that are eligible are all low-income residents of Illinois. Both tenants and landlords are eligible to apply. You do not need to have a case in court to receive these services, and immigration status does not matter. Next. And what legal assistance is available? There is housing and eviction information, document review and preparation, legal consultations and advice, referrals for mediation or rental assistance programs, and direct referrals to legal aid, including for in-court representation when the eviction moratorium ends. Next. One of the programs that exists in the state of Illinois is Eviction Help Illinois. So this is to help tenants who might be in a housing crisis um, and have three points of access. So you can either contact them by their telephone hotline, which is available in English and Spanish, through their online website and their chat box, or through texting them in the numbers in English and Spanish that um, you text either eviction or desalojo, and they'll um, prompt you to answer a couple questions. So after contacting the program, you will answer a few simple questions and that are needed to know your housing issue and your situation. And from there, a legal aid professional evaluates your eligibility and will contact you later on with potential next steps 
for assistance from the program Eviction Help Illinois. Next. So it's important to keep in mind that if, if Eviction Help um, Illinois, Eviction Help Illinois determines that they can't help you or assist you, there are other eviction legal support services available. Um, some organizations that are providing assistance to undocumented folks or people outside of Chicago include uh, Catholic Charities, North Suburban Legal Aid Clinic, the Public Interest Law Initiative, University YMCA, and the Westside Justice Center. Next. So now we'll be going over a few of the rental assistance programs that are available in the state of Illinois. Next. So the three that have been going on these past couple weeks that um, have been open for folks to apply for have been the state of Illinois, Illinois Rental Payment Program through IDA, the Illinois Housing Help Program through IDHS, and the City of Chicago Emergency Rental Assistance Program that has now closed for um, their assistance for applications. Next. So the Illinois Rental Payment Program is currently open for the entire state of Illinois, but it's very, very important to uh, remember to note that the tenant portal access closes in on July 18th in at 11:59 p.m., which is in about two days. Um, folks can apply. Tenants can apply at the website listed on the screen, and the, the type of assistance available is rent only. They can tenants can only receive up to twenty-five thousand. And it is for 12 months of past rent or three and three months of future rent. Next. And also there is also the Illinois Housing Help Program available through IDHS. This program is a little bit different in that um, in order to apply, you don't apply through a website or through a telephone number. You have to apply through one of the IDHS partners and receive a referral through them. Now, they're still accepting referrals. They're um, accepting referrals until funds run out. Until, so we definitely suggest that folks apply as soon as possible to increase their chances of being able to obtain funding. Uh, similar to the IDA program, um, the type of assistance available is for rental assistance, but this program also provides uh, assistance for utilities, such as water, light, gas, um, your internet, and there's no maximum amount of assistance. So you can still receive assistance for 12 months of past rent and three months of future rent. Next. A few of the documents that folks might need in order to apply to these programs are a government issued ID, a copy of the lease or rental agreement. Um, if this doesn't exist, you can always try to ask your landlord to write an affidavit or um, a letter of support um, stating, you know, that they do live here, they've been living here, this is how much they've been paying um, in lieu of a lease or rental agreement. You'll need a proof of your utility bill or your proof of address, um, how much you pay in rent and how much is due, um, utility bills and how much is due in utilities, proof of your taxes of the past few years, so your tax returns or your pay stubs, and proof of public assistance um, if, Apple, if, if you're receiving it, and a valid email address. Next slide. So this just shows an overview of the programs that we just went over. Um, you know, feel free to screenshot if it's available, but we'll also be posting the information um, in the comments for everyone to access. Next. And in order to be eligible for these programs, the programs will be looking at 50% and 80% of the area median income of where you live and your household size and your household income will be what determines your eligibility and how much assistance you can receive. Next. So we have a resource pamphlet that uh, the TRP team created, um, next slide, that um, is available on our Illinois Access to Justice website. Um, we will be posting the links to the English and Spanish uh, uh, pamphlets that we have created. And also keep in mind that some uh, we will be updating these pamphlets and distributing them once again to the community with updated dates and um, uh, information that folks might need. And with that, I'll go ahead and pass it back to Michelle for some important reminders. Thank you, Anadi. Um, some important reminders that everyone should take away from today's event is that your immigration status does not matter. Um, expired IDs are accepted. Uh, you can apply to these programs mentioned, um, but you can only get approved for one. And depending where you live, the area uh, median income is different. Um, if you don't have a lease, uh, your landlord can sign an affidavit. And um, less important note is that uh, you should not pay anyone to complete a rental assistance application. 
Um, and then with that, uh, Anneli, are there any questions that have come up? Yeah, so, um, you know, some questions that we've received in the past are, do tenants need a social security number or an individual tax ID number, such as an ITIN, in order to apply? Uh, so the answer is no. A uh, social security number or an ITIN is not required for tenants. Okay, great. And then what would happen if uh, someone doesn't have a formal proof of income? Uh, the applications will provide an option, an option for a written attestation form where individuals in this situation can sign and complete. Um, and then this will serve as a proof of income. Okay, thank you for clarifying. And what can individuals without a formal lease agreement do? Like, can they still apply for rental assistance programs? Um, if you don't have a lease, the landlord can write an affidavit that you live on their property. If your landlord doesn't want to write an affidavit for you, uh, you can still apply to the programs available. Uh, don't let landlord participation stop you. There will be um, opportunities to apply if your landlord does not cooperate. Okay, thank you. And is there any assistance for mortgages? Um, for... Mortgages, no, these programs are only available to renters. Okay, thank you. And then um, how will the funds be distributed to applicants that are approved for these programs? Uh, uh, their check will be issued directly to the housing provider. Okay, well, thank you. I think those are a few of the questions that we received on our end. Um, that's definitely helpful to you know answer those questions and we really appreciate you taking the time to answer them. Of course. Um, and with that, um, uh, that is it and concludes our Know Your Rights segment and our event. Thank you to TRP for helping us host today. And thank you again uh, to Commissioner Anaya for sharing this space with us. Um, if you have any questions, please add them in the, to the chat on our Facebook page or contact us um, at info at flatblue.org or you can contact us again um, and at our Facebook page. Um, thank you so much, everyone.